Nine principles that make great layouts. That's what we're talking about in this series. In part one, we covered focal point, white space, and hierarchy. In part two, grouping, scale, and sequence. And in this one, part three of three, we have three more principles. Let's get straight into it. Number seven is alignment. And you'll see all these come together at the end. But alignment is arranging items on vertical and horizontal axes. So with body copy, we generally want to align that to the left. That should be your default. That looks the best most of the time. You only have the rag on one side and it's the most legible. It's the easiest for people to read. Now you can center align for short sections uh, that can definitely work. Right alignment occasionally for compositional reasons for very short uh, sections. Justified text wouldn't generally advise it on the web, it can work in print, but you need to be a skilled uh, designer to fix uh, all the rivers and different issues uh, that's created in justified text. So you need to be a good typesetter to do that. So in general, we left a line. And with all other elements, there should just be some uh, element of decision making. Seemingly random alignment looks amateurish. Now we can have compositional uh, alignment for headlines so everything doesn't have to be you know barrel straight down the left or centrally you know headlines that are seem to be like off axis on different lines or in different angles and things can definitely work if it you know fits with these with these other principles. But I'll show you some bad examples later as well, some good ones, and hopefully that'll help uh, bring it all together. Uh, let's have a look at a website where this is done well. And this is for Grilly Type, who are a type foundry. And this is their kiosk where they sell little bits of merch. And although this is a very simple website, the shall we accept cookies? Seeing as it's a type foundry, we will. It, the alignment is very deliberate. So at the top where we have the name, Grilly Kiosk, and then shopping bag on the right, there is this rule horizontally, which helps uh, you know that this shopping bag doesn't just, it doesn't just float around in space, but it helps emphasize the deliberate alignment. It's aligned to the right, and it's also horizontally aligned along this same line. These uh, navigation to these different items are aligned to the left, all the information here, the headline of the product, the price, the description, etc., is left aligned. This button is the full width of the column in this case to emphasize that uh, the layout in columns. And you can even see uh, with them being a tight foundry, hopefully they <laughs> employ these principles, but even within this actual uh, document, you can see these rules that are emphasizing the rows and the alignment is very uh, deliberate here, even uh, throughout this document. Obviously, you know, with it being a type specimen, they've, you know, uh, kind of used all of the space and, and that kind of thing. But they're still very deliberate. Some of the principles we talked about last time, like scale and sequence on display here. You can see again in this type library, the rules, everything aligned in a very consistent manner it looks very deliberate even when you go down to the footer the information uh, below the line in the footer is on the same columns as uh, these products here and it makes it feel uh, very consistent and deliberate and it can be a challenge on the web with alignment because uh, you have different screen sizes and such and you need to create responsive layouts but each screen size should be catered for and checked carefully to ensure that the alignment looks right in all these different places. The next principle, number eight, is balance. How do you make things feel balanced? Well, for a lot of people, they do it by symmetry. Symmetry is often employed because it's the easiest way of achieving balance. The center alignment, which we talked about being suitable for certain formats, short sections of text, but symmetry is kind of a lazy, not very interesting way of uh, achieving balance. And again, with text, it doesn't uh, look the best. It's not the best solution for, for longer ranges of text. So asymmetrical layouts, which is the one below, these are more flexible and they often look more elegant. So you simply need to use counterbalancing elements to distribute the visual weight. So in this example, 
of this magazine, this composition of this photo essay is more visual interesting than a symmetrical one because, or one with all the images the same size because it's been arranged deliberately to achieve a balance. So the model on the right hand page is looking into the layout and is placed slightly to the right of center within the frame. Her gaze is in the direction of the top image on the left page and then the bottom left image is there to balance the composition across the spread by adding weight into this area and this layout was created using our final principle number nine grids command of the grid allows you to achieve all of the above it's the most useful tool for the designer who wishes to produce an effective layout the structure it creates order it conveys confidence in your work I grabbed another magazine from here in the studio, took a quick snap of it, and you can see here this grid layout perhaps on display. So on the right, we have a full page image, and on the left page, uh, we have the type. Uh, but if I've overlaid, you know, roughly, you know, this is uh, an image with the pages folded, but you can see there's a seven column grid so each of the columns of type actually span over three columns three and three and then the one in the center there's a little box out caption which has then been center aligned so there's a combination of different alignment going on here as well we have kind of a center alignment really because uh, at the top where it says big interviews global the section of the magazine and then below that the headline of the article and the byline and then that caption I mentioned, so they all align on that central axis. And then the columns at either side are justified. So, but we have the balance between the two because it's it's heavy with type and, and then this full page image uh, on the other side. So these principles of alignment and balance and grids are here. As you cycle through a later page in this same magazine, you see the same grid, the seven column grid. And again, I've done this roughly. There's probably gutters within these columns. That's the, sp the space between each actual uh, column. You'll see that if you set up your columns in something like Adobe InDesign for print or Figma or XD for the web, you'll have that option of the gutter, the little space in between. Check out Rand's video on Figma that he produced recently if you want to look at how you set up those columns and, and lay out a website. But here, what they've done is the type columns are actually uh, left aligned with a rag and then they are two columns wide instead of three as in the on the uh, lead page for the article so they've got three columns of a uh, type here and you can see how images are across two or three columns on the left page and they might span all seven like the one on the bottom left so with a grid you have a lot of options uh, to uh, play with in your layout to give interest in the last video part two we talked about sequencing a layout that moves around as you cycle through gives some interest or you scroll down similarly with the example we showed uh, last time of this coffee table book so with a print or some sort of fixed layout like a PDF or something it allows the designer to set margins and rows as well as columns in a standardized manner and that's difficult to achieve sometimes in responsive design although we saw with the grilly type example you know making sure we take care of that horizontal alignment as well can produce a really pleasing result so every module in a grid doesn't need to be filled it's usually preferable to leave some empty. We saw that in the magazine and we see that in this book example. Another book I grabbed from the studio. This is a book on the architect's R deed. You can see just having some white space allows you to achieve, uh, you know, a, a balanced feel, even if it's asymmetrical. I mean, this layout is symmetrical in this instance, but if you see another spread from this same book, this time the images bleed out over the margins. So there are different options you can have within the grid and having the grid in position allows you to then make use of all the principles we've talked about. Using a grid does not make a good design. It's a tool to help you achieve a suitable result and tools are brilliant. Tools are uh, what we use, you know, a musical instrument is a tool to make something that sounds uh, beautiful, you know. Uh, a screwdriver is a tool for fixing screws <laughs> you get the idea <laughs> so 
bearing in mind all the principles, all nine principles that we've talked about, uh, use your grid to achieve these things, to find, you know, that suitable point, focal point, allow white space around it, you know, group things together along that grid layer. It really helps with alignment and achieving balance and those kind of things. But you need to bear all these things in mind. You can't just uh, plonk things into different cells and think, hooray, I've achieved a great layout. Still need to choose, you know, make decisions about where the focal point is and, and things like that. So let's have a look at a poor layout. Often we see these things and think, yeah, but what about when it's not working? What does that actually look like? Well, it's hard to find these things. I had to do a bit of a bit of a Google and uh, I found this one for a student Christmas party and uh, where to begin with this <laughs> let's see what you can spot but let's move through these nine principles I mean where is the focal point I have no idea white space there's none of it it's like let's cram more stuff into every little uh, area hierarchy I have no idea what's most important what really stands out I kind of see Walk about in the middle, which is a, like a pub, a club venue. I see Santa, I see Christmas. I have no idea. Grouping. This would really benefit from grouping. Remember our nightclub poster from before, uh, from I think it might have been a previous video. We group together some of the information, the when and where, the ticketing information. This could be pulled together in different sections to help it. Scale. This is a big problem. There's not enough of a difference between the point sizes. Uh, now I'm looking at it, I'm seeing all these other issues like kerning. Look at the word party, just what's going on with that P and the A. But the point sizes, the scale. So the scale of the imagery, which is, you know, is it in the background? Is it in the foreground? The logo and all the different type, it's too similar. There's not enough of a dramatic difference in scale to make more of a pleasing composition. Uh, sequencing is not really relevant because it's a poster alignment what what is this aligned to I have no idea it was kind of a compositional alignment with the headline but then it's it's all over the shop isn't it balance no just fill all the spaces <laughs> grids have definitely not been used so it takes a designer to you know really you uh, pull this apart and, ma and make sense of this and think about what this this poster this is trying to achieve and trying to do I mean you look at um, really elegant design posters like the Swisted project from Mike Joyce who's the owner of Stereotype Design in New York City and I know you're probably thinking okay yeah but this is for you know fans of music and design you know kind of obnoxious design fans who look down on the sort of gaudy <laughs> you know gauche designs of the the previous mess yes but these principles are in play and you could do something that was maybe uh, looked more engaging and fun for uh, students who wanted a good night out while still applying these principles so these posters have a clear focal point they make good use of white space hierarchy grouping scale is dramatically employed here the large graphic elements and and remember last time we talked about the uh, large medium and small elements that's what we have on each of these posters and uh, obviously is used a grid uh, to help lay things out and uh, achieving balance throughout these designs so this is a you know kind of a best practice example of how you do that but what about something like you know, a post is one thing. How do you do that through a website and bring all these things uh, together? Well, I think some of the examples we've talked about in previous weeks display that. But let's have enough, a look at a, another one right now. Let's go to another website away from this grilly type website over to the website for the recent movie. Let's just refresh it. House of Gucci. This is kind of a mini site uh, to help promote this film. And we have that dramatic sense of scale with this large headline uh, and it's very large it fills the page but as we move through every panel uh, has these principles in mind it tends to be you know center aligned which works in this uh, sense but we have this sense of sequence like if we hover over something other images come through and each panel 
Uh, so each section of the website, uh, you know, becomes its, its 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 own little area, and we get the sense of that by each one having, you know, a panel as we go through. So if we click on one of these costume design, there's lovely use of white space here to really let this headline uh, stand out. It's very clear. We know what it is. It's this person, I guess the person in charge of costume design <laughs> for the film, uh, talking about it. Here she is. She's done a phenomenal job. And the sense of scale, the different sizes, uh, point sizes as we move through, not too many, uh, but just varying it from the headlines, the captions, uh, to the body copy from the interview. Obviously, they've got phenomenal photography and such, but it's laid out. Again, we can see a grid. You can see here the structure, uh, the gutters here between the rows and columns, uh, and these nice box outs, and this is sequence as we move through. And again, you don't need to fill every cell in a grid. Leave some empty. This creates white space, asymmetrical layout. So watch how it balances. This one was on the left, the space here. Then this image is on the right. And it all works to really tell a story and give a really pleasing experience for the viewer because there's enough white space that um, it feels calm enough for me to navigate through to spend some time uh, reading this interview. So when you can bring all these elements together, that's when you can do things uh, that are really interesting and uh, will just bring a bit of uh, joy to your viewer and your user as they uh, move through your sites and uh, enjoy your compositions. So we hope this series has been helpful for you. Uh, nine principles and until next time, happy designing. <laughs>